So in this video, I'm gonna show you the differences between a Shopify dropshipping business that makes $10,000 profit per month and a Shopify dropshipping business that makes $500 in profit per month. Both of these businesses have been in business for 12 months. So what is the difference? What makes the difference between a business that scales super quickly and super profitably and provides a very comfortable income versus one that just kind of ticks along and doesn't make any life changing differences. So the first store I wanna show you is vanityled.com. The site age is one year, the average monthly profit is $10,000 and they are in the evergreen, in their own words, makeup niche. If you haven't seen these guys before, basically they are selling, I will show you this in a second, they are selling a LED makeup box. The second Shopify dropshipping store I wanna show you guys is called Smarty Tots. It's an automated dropshipping business. It has generated 10K months in Q2, Q3, and Q4. However, its average monthly profit over the course of 12 months is $478. And as we can see, this business is one years old as well. The financial statistics for the past 12 months. So we'll take a look at Valenti LED, annual revenue of 385 with an annual profit of $128,000 with an overall profit margin of 33%, which is very healthy. Um, in dropshipping in the dropshipping space. Smarty Tots then an annual revenue of 40,000 pounds with an annual profit of 5,730 with only a profit margin of 15%. So how can one business be double as profitable and make more money? These are the things that we're gonna be taking a look in the video and I'm gonna be pointing out the differences between Vanity LED and between Smarty Tots and the sorts of things that Vanity LED are doing to set themselves apart from the competition and outperform other stores. Okay, so these are the two Shopify stores. Straight away, we can see what kind of stores they are and what kind of products they sell. Um, so Vanity LED, this is the product in question here where I'm floating my cursor around. Um, Smarty Tots, it is a kids store that sells lots of different kids products. The reason I'm taking a look in this point of view is because 86, 87% of my sales come from a mobile device or somebody using a mobile device. Um, I suspect if you're established then it's probably somewhere similar for you as well. So when it comes to designing your store, ignore the desktop layout to some degree, obviously check it after you've completed your store. But when you are designing it and doing the day-to-day -day kind of running and management and creating images, make sure they look good primarily on a mobile device before you check on a desktop. So what can we see then? If you were to come to these guys' homepage, these, this is the first thing you see. So on the left, we can see the product. We can see how it looks like a really nice, well put together and designed image. On the right hand side, it looks fairly amateurish. Things like the text isn't centralized. Um, some words have capitalization, some don't. There's lots of space here in the end of the blue box, but not very much space here. You might think I'm nitpicking, but all of these little kind of design things really do add up to make a big difference. There's no kind of like benefits or information about shopping with this store on the right hand side. Whereas on the left hand side, they have a mega spring promo, 45% off store wide. And at the top here, they have free UK shipping over 35 pounds. So just in that very first screen, they do a much better job of promoting their business. If we scroll down into the next half, so we can see on the left hand side, so pay later with Klarna. Klarna is a household name. They are well known for being able to buy things online and split your payments over the course of three or six months, I believe. It helps this business piggyback off the reputation of Klarna. Klarna are not going to work with businesses that aren't very reputable or aren't selling and delivering on the promises they are that they are doing so on their website. Basically, Klarna will stop working with a store if they're not supplying the quality products or if they get a lot of chargebacks and refunds. So it does a really good job of legitimizing this business. On this second half, there's not a lot going on here. There's loads of text in bullet points, um, blaster electric water gun with a call to action. However, if it was me, I'd have this at the top this GIF here so you can see what it is before you say what it is kind of thing. On the left-hand side, more custom, well-designed imagery that's in keeping with the brand over here. Lots of different colors. They've got the different payment options as well, which they're kind of ramming down the consumer's throat. They had that in the banner range at the top in case you missed that. That which at this point is not very important. You need to sell people on the product before you tell the, before you try and tell them how they can buy it. Moving down into the third section of the page, then we can see lots of different bundle gift sets. Again, more really visually pleasing custom 
custom designed imagery put together. It looks like there's a real company and business and brand behind this website who have put together a setup. They have the items in their hands. They've put them in different layouts and different settings to take really nice professional custom imagery. This is not imagery you will find on AliExpress. On the right hand side, straight away we can see one of the images has been cut off. There's lots of white space on the store as well. So between our mission, between images and the text, between this and the next section, white space is not good because white space does nothing. It doesn't help sell a product. There's no information there to help convince a consumer. You want to try and get rid of white space as much as possible while still obviously keeping the store visually pleasing, easy to understand and consume the information. If we move down into the next sections then, so something you'll see down here for a start, these look like stock images. These don't look like real Facebook profile photos um, or real photos of customers and I think consumers can probably spot that a miles away. When you look at the different images of the products, they're always in different settings and different backgrounds. This is recycled content taken from suppliers off AliExpress or wherever they're sourcing um, the products from. On the left hand side, a lot of the products bar this wash bag um, have the same background in the back the same background as these two and the same background as we saw up here. So, so there's consistency through the store, which does a really good job of in keeping with that brand that they're trying to build and put across. They also have a gift card as well, which gives off the impression that they're a physically established business that you can buy and give somebody a gift card to then go and shop and spend with them. Let's jump onto their product pages next then and take a look at the different setups. Hey, just real quick, just 20 seconds of your time before we get back to the video. I just wanna make you aware of a free training that I've recorded and is available to everybody. This training will show you how to profit from Shopify dropshipping in 21 days. Now, I know that is a bold claim, but we've had hundreds of people go through this very same training and achieve that very same goal. So this training, it will show you how to find your very first winning product. It will show you how to find quality supplies that will deliver your product in less than seven days. No Chinese suppliers that take two to three weeks to deliver poor quality and plastic products. I'll show you how to build a professional and high converting industry standard Shopify store at above 3%. And I'll also show you how to target people who are interested and want to buy your product. And like I said, find your very first customers in three weeks. It's 100% free, won't cost you a single penny. All I ask is for your email address and I ask you for that so I can also send you this. So this is also 100% free. Everybody who watches the training gets my personal hand-picked selection. It's a PDF download of 194 profitable product ideas for 2023. So by watching this training, not only do you get the products you need to sell, but you also get the strategy that you need to sell them. If that sounds good to you, make sure you check out the top link in the video description below. Thanks. So what's really interesting with Vanity LED, and I'm not sure I've ever seen this before, but rather than go straight into the typical product page layout and section, which is what's on screen now, they actually have a free gift advertised at the very top. Now, free gifts are a great way to kind of help tip the customer over the edge or tip the potential customer over the edge. It's a really good way of separating yourself from any potential competition too. So if there were two stores, for example, selling this LED makeup box, however, with one store, you got a free mirror, which they say is worth 14 pounds. More likely than not, you're probably going to go with these guys because you get a gift, you get that free gift for shopping with them. So if you haven't implemented or tried that strategy for your own stores, then I highly recommend you do so um, and see what difference it can make to you. So just comparing the two sections from the two stores, I would say the one on the left is just laid out a bit neater, a bit more pleasing, a bit more aesthetically. I think on the left hand side, it's a lot easier to kind of consume um, the information about the products. And I think it's just a bit more clearer in terms of how to go ahead and buy the product. We obviously mentioned Kalana before, piggybacking off the reputation of those guys. Um, they have a really nice upsell integration here. I've not actually seen this app before. I'm definitely gonna try and um, find out which one this is that works really, really seamlessly. It does a really, really good job um, of helping to boost that average order value. If you've been drop shipping for a while now, you'll know that profit margins, they're not great um, if you are drop shipping. So anything you can do like this, like an extra nine quid can really make the difference between a business that succeeds and a business that fails. So on the left hand side we have 175 verified reviews that took me all the way down to the bottom. Just to point out this as well, um, they're humanizing the brand, lots and lots of people 
or imagery of people on the store featuring the product, showing how many different people actually own this product. That's a really nice way of really humanizing the brand and giving off that impression of a really established brand that a lot of people have shopped with. People like to follow other people. It's why influencer marketing exists. So the more people you can feature on your product pages using and demonstrating the product, then the better. Coming back to these sections then, on the right hand side for Smarty Tarts, I don't really like the way they've listed these bullet points, how they're really kind of like squashed in together. It's not the easiest font to read and there's too many words there in a row. That's too big of like a paragraph because to read through that is probably gonna take someone 30 seconds to a minute. And you might be thinking, well, that's not a very long time, but I highly recommend you install apps like Lucky Orange and see how long the average user spends on your website and you might be surprised. People are shopping on their mobile phones. Mobile phones are the biggest distraction in most people's lives um, because there's so many different ways they can be distracted by it. They can get messages, notifications, phone calls. Then there's the real world distractions. They might be at work on the lunch break when it ends. Somebody might want to try and talk to them, whatever it may be. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that every second somebody has to take extra when on your website is an extra second. Potentially, they can get distracted to leave your website and never come back again. So these guys, 175 reviews. These guys, only 25. Everything on the left hand side is very in keeping in terms of the color schemes, the soft pastel colors, whereas on the right hand side, it's a bit of a mismatch. And um, there's probably half a dozen so um, different colors on that page. As we scroll down into the imagery on the left hand side, we've seen this image before, custom imagery, lots and lots of real people really humanizing the brand. On the right hand side, it looks like a photoshopped image. Um, those two people there don't look like they're even holding that pen properly. It doesn't look like a real table in front of them. It doesn't like look like they're actually holding the cars either. Same thing for this image too. You can see by the fact that it's a really plain white surface that these cars are on. That's clearly not um, a real setting. Those kids are clearly not playing with this product. One last thing to mention as well, because not a lot of people talk about this. A lot of people will say import as many reviews as possible. However, However, yes, more reviews is better, but only if they do a good job of actually selling the product. So if we come onto Smarty Tots and have a look at some of these reviews, very funny stuff toys. It doesn't sound real, whether it is real or not. It probably is real. It's probably just a dodgy translation from AliExpress. Same thing for this one. So smiley dish for surviving this transmitter to and like. All toys do that, but a week during the four elements. So it doesn't make sense. It's broken English. If I was a consumer reading these reviews, I wouldn't think they were true. Um, they do more harm for the business than they do good, in my opinion. Whereas if we come and take a look at these reviews, um, not only do they feature um, the branded packaging, but this box is so cute. It was delivered quite quickly and the quality gives the impression of being good. I haven't used it that much so far, but I'm happy with it. So they're all extensive reviews. They're not just like one words or one sentence like some of these and they're not broken English either like this one. So jam or recommended recommend you. So I think that brings this comparison to an end. Um, the key message to take away from this is be professional and be legitimate. Don't try and cut corners, invest in your business, have pride in your business and see your business as something that's gonna be around for the long run. Yes, it's okay to try and build a store quick and scale it and test things quick to see if it's going to work. But I think whether, I'm gonna do a video on this actually, it's just come to me. I'll see it all the time. People will send me messages as I've tested 20 products and I can't find a winner. If you've tested 20 products and not a single one of those has been successful for you, there is something wrong with your testing strategy. It's not because dropshipping doesn't work, either you're not building an adequate Shopify store or you're just simply picking the wrong products, or you could be running poor marketing campaigns. So that's going to be a video topic. Look out for it next week. Make sure you guys subscribe if you want to tune in for that one when I do get around to posting it. Any comments, questions, video suggestions, anything I can help you with, make sure you put them in the comment section below. I read every single one, so I will get back to you. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.